Your Excellence, Madam Helena, and our, um, the Dean of the Faculty, dear uh, students of architecture, ladies and gentlemen, my big pleasure to be here in, in the front such a wide audience. Um, I will circulate around architecture quite, quite freely under this, this title, Spiritual uh, or Memorial Sites. Um, let me uh, tell a bit about Finland, uh, about my background and uh, some words about Finnish architecture, only very few. Maybe because we have uh, this, uh, this special year, we are celebrating uh, our uh, 100 years anniversary as uh, our ambassador recognized in her speech. I also have to say that uh, I would like to apologize, but uh, I'd like to say so that uh, we have a special way to write your capital's name, Prague. Sorry about that a bit, because there is a wrong letter I can recognize and see now. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, we really we we, we met uh, for uh, it was uh, 15 uh, years ago in, in Rotterdam, and it's good to see that you have managed also here now new school of architecture. I mean this building itself. I have to sorry now. Uh, this is the same situation every time. Yeah, okay now. Yeah, so memorial places, uh, I would like to say about the background uh, uh, a few words more. Uh, because uh, during the last years we have worked with uh, different types of public buildings, with uh, museums, with uh, different exhibition buildings, learning centers, information centers. We have a wide scope of uh, school buildings, libraries. Uh, that means that these buildings types have very great importance in our society in Finland. Behind that there, of course, are tight uh, nets of our social care school systems, healthcare centers and so, which are, uh, let's say, signs and symbols of uh, Finland, of our our day. Um, yeah, we Finns, uh, we have a certain uh, special mood. I think uh, maybe we have, I, I know a few Czech people and uh, uh, I think uh, we have a common mood. For instance, that when we drink, we are serious. And also when we are making architecture, we are serious. Or if we are thinking uh, the quality of art, we are serious. These masters of uh, icons, uh, profiles uh, of Finnish art and architecture, Mr. Sibelius, for instance, uh, uh, the painter Gallen Gallela himself, they are thinking very serious uh, the position of, uh, of Finland and Finnish art just uh, in the turn of uh, 19th and 20th century. Uh, yes, we cannot avoid to talk about nature in the connection of Finnish design and architecture. It's, uh, uh, it's a meat, but uh, it may sound uh, a cliché or frost too, but uh, for me that is uh, a real thing, a real truth. And also how our painters, artists, they have uh, uh, repeated this uh, uh, phenomena uh, in, in their paintings and in their, their art. Uh, we know Okay, we have a guy and we have one, one person uh, uh, creating a certain umbrella of uh, all of us Finnish architects still today, uh, Alvaro Aalto. Uh, I came just from Berlin uh, Friday. Uh, there was uh, uh, a conference uh, uh, referring uh, to the exhibition uh, of uh, the Finnish design and architecture. Uh, the people are still very, very curious. Uh, how do we understand? How do we? Uh, what kind of attitude we uh, contemporary architects, Finnish architects, uh, have in the front of uh, uh, Alvaro Aalto? So that uh, how wide his shadow is still today. But uh, I, I normally I argue that no shadow, not at all, but good way, a good umbrella, again, a heavy rain. And in that sense, in that shadow, it is very, very 
place uh, very comfortable we, uh, to, to work uh, today in, in Finland too. Uh, yeah, Alvar Aalto was also, by the way, uh, nature was a special, you know, you know, you are aware of the history of modern architecture. I know you all of, uh, of the audience here. One thing to pick up uh, um, now in this connection is that uh, to Alvar Aalto, nature was and had a very special role because according to him, the best nature is the built nature. The built nature, not uh, not the pure uh, nature, but built nature, but uh, in a harmony, in a balance, so that the building and the environment they create a composition good way and and being in a balance. Uh, I have uh, some uh, examples of our previous projects. And this is, uh, I, uh, I, I don't go now into the details telling uh, more exactly about the content of these uh, projects, but uh, maybe just opening the tema of uh, 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 this uh, spiritual and memorial sites and places and buildings to uh, we have been invited in uh, several international competitions during the last couple of years. And uh, uh, last year, at the end of the last year, we received the invitation to participate in uh, uh, the competition of uh, the Holocaust Memorial of United Kingdom. The site is very, very special. One is next to the park, next to uh, the Parliament House, icon-like house, icon-like site. And, uh, also very, very controversial site. So the question was at the beginning of the competition that how the architects, how they can use and utilize this area, maybe destroy the park, which is uh, a living, uh, living room for uh, the Lonrian people, for, for the citizens who are living here in the neighborhood quarters. Uh, it was also uh, the situation way when we as architects we had to think and find out carefully what has Holocaust been in United Kingdom during the Second World War or before that already. I don't tell that story nor more exactly, only saying that very many young people and children were transported to the safe to United Kingdom. And uh, that was uh, the strategy we created and developed then to this final uh, uh, submission we, we, we made. So we architects, we very often, according to my experience today, we should be able to tell not only stories, we have to be able to tell the truth of the history, for instance. But we have to construct a kind of story and to tell this story with the help of architectural elements. And this is, for me, very essential part of my work, but also very, very demanding, because uh, for me, I, every time I also I try to avoid to talk about symbols, we are working on metaphorical level, but uh, at the same time, we, we should be able to create as abstract projects as, as possible. In this case, for instance, in the slide in the middle, there are two arcs, two pure uh, steel arcs. One arc is telling the history how these children were transported to the safe from the continent by trains and, and uh, by, by ships. Another one, another arc, tells how some of them were transported to the dead camps. So these two arcs were telling the story of Holocaust in United Kingdom. I was working together with uh, a British, uh, with uh, an Israel artist, Danny Caravan, 
and uh, of course uh, scholars uh, of uh, Judaism and so, but however, that was really, really demanding, but quite typical uh, question in an international competition today. Uh, also, another competition with uh, name is Museum of Defense and Siege of Leningrad that was organized also this year. Uh, we were uh, among the winners in this competition too. It was an invitational one, but just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the client has done the solution and uh, the project is to be run by a Russian company. So our design was too modern. Also this project, our task was to create um, a kind of clear story beside some more pragmatical topics, like how to rearrange uh, the area itself, the competition area, which is uh, a part of uh, the shoreline of Neva River. In this competition, uh, as in the case in London, we strive to uh, create a situation where the building itself, the museum, which is actually quite wide, our past the program was, was wide, more than uh, 20,000 square meters. Our intention was, and strategy was also here to hide the building itself and to lift up only some of the most essential elements which would work as an artwork could work. So to operate in between art and architecture somehow. So there are actually now three elements uh, visible in, uh, in this, uh, how this pointer works, I have to uh, Carolina, I need your assistance again. We have no. Okay. Maybe. Okay. No. No. However, we understand our 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 three three uh, three elements. I will say some words about them later on. No problem. That works now very well. You know. Also here, of course, because. The site widely is memorial one already. So St. Petersburg is big scale memorial. Inspirational city in many ways because of its history and its uh, city structure. Uh, we, uh, of course, analyze it very, very carefully. The shape of the city and let's say the most essence, essential features of the city. That means that uh, St. Petersburg is very, very horizontal. Its profile is very horizontal. Time to time there are some peaks of churches or of some, uh, some memorials and so. Our decision was to make very, very low solution, which is uh, which also has a certain wow effect, which was uh, one of the hopes and wishes of the organizer. So how to create side by side the memorial, spiritual, spiritual site or place, and also to create, to create a certain wow effect. This wow effect is another big thing in the museums and exhibition buildings of our day. Besides that, the building should tell something more what we can explain um, by our brains. We have to bring a certain emotional level to, to the concept very, very strongly. Here in the front there is uh, uh, a square of the testimony. Up there, uh, just uh, as most dominating component is uh, a kind of spiral, which is a kind of telescope to see then uh, the city of uh, existing St. Petersburg, and the name of that compon component was uh, the threat of life, which is describing both the end of life uh, during uh, defense and siege of Leningrad, but also, which is also a symbol of growth, strongly, very well. 
we didn't explain this. Uh, our strategy was that the jury has to under understand this kind of message itself, and they understood, but that was not clear enough. The Russian, they wish to see more canons, more signs of real war, and to take about, uh, uh, about the threat of life. That was too much, too difficult to understand, too abstract message to the people, according uh, to the Russian, Russian client. They were, uh, among the jury members, they were uh, Rem Kolhas, for instance, uh, and, and so and so. And among the invitas invita invited architects, uh, uh, Snow Hetta from Norway, uh, Herma Herzog from German, uh, besides our team, and Rafael Moneo from, <coughs> from Spain. Uh, it was really controversial approach that the media was asking us after the competition because we were nominated among the winners that how it is possible that uh, uh, the Finnish team can take care of the project because Finland was our enemy in the seas <coughs> and, uh, and, and defense and that was, that was also another layer we meet today more and more in international projects so that we architects, we should be really skillful and able to uh, communicate with the people, with the citizens, with different uh, um, associations, like in this case with veterans, uh, with media and so. But that was, however, our dream of uh, memorial place, memorial site in St. Petersburg. And uh, some slides more here. This uh, spiral, which was uh, a kind of uh, top after the circulation of, uh, of the exhibition, which was core exhibition area, was lo located at the bottom of the whole complex. And uh, then uh, just using this spiral uh, uh, stair, or of course elevator lifts, you can then climb up onto the top of, uh, of the building and to find this final uh, final uh, uh, memorial site on the roof level and to see uh, also the silhouette of, uh, of St. Petersburg. We architects also, that is quite strange actually and really big demand because we should be able to uh, move from one uh, site to uh, the another one. In this case, we were inv invited uh, to uh, uh, sketch uh, 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 the process for uh, for uh, the Sultanate of Oman. You know, also quite interesting competition. There were maybe five, six invited architects. I can't remember anymore. Uh, the winner was an Australian company. Uh, I don't know what is going on now with this process. But that was also, that came because I was thinking this, this word, memorial or spiritual, and the meaning of site generally, because we are talking about sites in architecture. Because for me, in the first hand, architecture is not only buildings. Building is, building is actually nothing without without an environment. We have to consider the environment and in that sense, that sense we should, in my opinion, to strive to create context-based architecture every time, so that the whole context is a part of uh, the game of architecture. How to make architecture on the area which it, it was uh, totally uh, uninhabited? It was like uh, a moon skin, moon landscape, without any visible buildings, only a plateau and uh, a mountain. The height of the area was 2,000 meters, something like that. And uh, temperature, when we had uh, the site visit, it was 44 uh, degrees. One, uh, yes, just my Australian, colleague, by the way, was very interested in 
why we have applied this competition because we are coming from Finland. And I had to say, I don't know when I saw the site itself. No, we were also winner, uh, not in this competition too. We have great pleasure to uh, work within our international team uh, because in the competitions like this, uh, we can't operate alone. We have to have uh, uh, project managers, we have to have engineering teams, etc. This uh, kind of uh, formula is a standard today in international competitions. Also here, how to create now this spiritual site, how to bring uh, somehow uh, your own uh, uh, idea, uh, your uh, own uh, thoughts onto the site where its history is existing, not at all. It was a pure in, uh, uninhabited uh, area, only so I said. And also, how to uh, think how to approach the cultural context of this country and this task generally. We uh, completed, just during these times, we were completing our Museum of Polish Jews in Poland. And now we uh, had to find uh, our message, our solution for an Islamic building, which was very special one because Oman has its own history and we cannot mix it with uh, the uh, other Islamic countries. Maybe this was not too strong impression uh, of uh, uh, what we understood with an Islamic art and architecture, but however, that was uh, our attempt to do it. Now it's good to come back to Finland from this hiddenness. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, below there is, uh, there is a photo uh, describing uh, uh, cultivated fields with a river. This is the environment where I was born myself. My, my parents were farmers and uh, yeah, and also up there in, uh, on the right hand side in the corner there is another a uh, photo also describing my my home area. There is the name Kaustinen uh, in uh, uh, the western part of Finland, and uh, that was my my area, not far away from from here. There are also some uh, buildings we have uh, managed in uh, areas or sites we have managed in, in in Finland. But however, I think. Uh, that is to talk about memorial sites. Uh, very often, I, I I have to come to uh, my my memories from my childhood. I think that we all it's it's good to come back to that times time to time, because uh, it has so deep impact to our creativity. In my opinion, I have the feeling that. Uh, I am rowing this landscape project after project somehow. So it's, it's a kind of uh, way uh, or type of uh, imagination also. How do you are living in your, your, your head and what, uh, what is your uh, uh, basic, your mental attitude in the front of uh, architecture? I honor very much this kind of landscape because it's pure, clean, and not yet destroyed by uh, by any any new buildings or or also not yet occupied by bushes, which is uh, maybe the uh, the future of this this beautiful area. This is uh, the landscape, uh, uh, my la own landscape today. That is. Uh, uh, in the middle part, describing our island, my wife Maria is uh, uh, with us here too, and uh, let's say 
Uh, we bought this small island some years ago, and this is, this is our spiritual place or our, our memorial place, many, many ways. The area is not dominated rivers or cultivated fields, but by lakes and by forests. And this is, of course, one, uh, one uh, source, of course, of inspirations, although it is also a certain phrase of, uh, or cliché of the Finnish design or architecture, because everywhere there, are, uh, there is nature existing. Of course, also here in Czech, you have very, very beautiful landscapes and nature. But somehow, I think we Finns we have a special relationship with with nature. However, and I would argue that it is visible also, recognizable in our architecture, many ways. Yeah, and at the same time, also an example that uh, two persons they can live very well in this small cabin, although the floor area is no more than uh, 16 square meters, something like that. There are all the uh, necessary components to leave. So we have pet, we have, uh, we have the desk, we have a table where to, to eat, small bookshelf, uh, etc. We have the terrace, and then there is the storage behind the, uh, this, uh, the cabin where we are, where we are sleeping. So, so also, this is something which is or has been good way uh, bearing a thing in the Finnish architecture, a certain type of modesty, so to avoid to do any extra. So small is nice, small is good, and uh, modesty, simplicity is, uh, is one of the key words or are keywords in uh, in the architecture. Uh, in uh, in the eastern part of Finland, not far away from our island, uh, we completed this building uh, already 25 years ago or something like that. At that time, a wooden architecture in Finland was, was not not at all actually uh, in a debate. Generally, uh, we are built according. Uh, our uh, building standards, which were valid at that time, wood was uh, and timber structures were not allowed in a building type like this in public buildings, and uh, we had to be fine also with these existing regulations. That meant that the frame of this building was built uh, with concrete, but uh, all the interiors, exteriors, facades were. Uh, were clad by uh, by wooden panels or or lattice system, and uh, but also here, although this later on received a bit criticism because of its materiality, and was maybe a bit a kind of kick of project to uh, start in Finland more serious discussion around wooden architecture. Nowadays, all of our regulations have been changed totally, and uh, wood has an equal uh, position with all the other material, steel and concrete. So building like this is, of course, possible to build in wood today fully. Also, also it's, uh, it's frame in wood. That site also, according to this uh, site plan and the model, we can recognize the building is alone in the middle of the forest, not far away from the shoreline of the Lake Saima. Uh, also here, and uh, I think this was very first time we uh, used uh, uh, as a title of our competition uh, project as a title, the word which was describing something here 
the title of this competition project was Lusto. Lusto is a very nice Finnish word, meaning and describing an annual wood ring of, of a building. And uh, describing a uh, symbolizing uh, group also. And uh, that was quite interesting that at the beginning of the 90s, that was also quite uh, tough, uh, uh, quite strong sentence uh, in uh, our Finnish uh, architectural climate somehow because how I said at the beginning of, of our speech, the Finnish architecture, in my opinion, it has been, this is a positive value, of course, but it has been quite serious thing. We can't joke with architecture. And to talk about symbols at that time was also somehow out of uh, the vocabulary of architecture. That was not so important, but to us it was because also uh, it secured the quality, final quality of the architecture of this building because our client liked very much that we had a certain story, that we had a certain allegorical level in our architecture. And, uh, and that, was, uh, that was a power, bearing power in uh, the design process throughout uh, the whole process. Reflections uh, between interiors, exteriors. This is uh, a kind of uh, basic tool we strive to utilize every time when we are working with public buildings so that you are not sure if you are outside, if you are inside of the building. And uh, in, uh, in that case, in this case, maybe uh, also how the people can circulate in the interiors. It reminds uh, a bit, if you are walking or circulating in the nature, in the forest, so different light conditions, different heights, and also, which is every time important to utilize and to use different scales of components. Of course, that is very, very uh, inspirational uh, situation when you are. Uh, uh, when you, uh, you have been uh, committed uh, or you have the commission uh, uh, of the exhibitions to, we had here and uh, that was an extra layer in this architecture to uh, uh, define architecture uh, making the exhibition itself, which was of course the main task of this project. Side by that Process side by uh, the Finnish Forest Museum. We were working also with uh, another process, and this is not far away from my from this from the area where I was was born. Uh, yeah, there is. I don't know if you consider the name, but the name is Folk Art Center uh, in the western part of Finland. Um, the building was is. Uh, very much a modern multifunctional building and uh, with architecture task is also to list uh, faces of this small city which is known of its annual folk uh, art music festival or folk music festival uh, that was uh, behind this project that the Ministry of Culture funded the project beginning of 90s too, and uh, now, still today, the building is serving partially also as a school building, but especially providing uh, uh, good uh, circumstances, conditions uh, for different types of concerts, uh, recordings, and so and so. Here we are. We are, we were studying also, uh, and we studied also wooden structures, timber technology. This was uh, one of the pilot projects projects in Finland, beginning of 90s, to uh, extend knowledge, experience, standards of uh, wooden architecture. And some of these boxes have been built uh, uh, with a wooden frame to some of them with uh, uh, concrete 
that uh, would had also a very prominent role. This is uh, very much uh, also, to me, very uh, spiritual sight many ways. First of all, uh, the open landscape is visible from here on the top of the whole building complex. And actually this part, which is uh, uh, downstairs and uh, on the backside of this photographer, there is an old uh, dance pavilion also. So this open square, uh, which is uh, created by the boxes of this building or wings of this building, has really flexible nature many ways. There is one open-air theater, uh, auditorium also. So many ways uh, a certain uh, get-together place for the people who are participating in, in uh, uh, these uh, music festivals, but also, also uh, let's say, uh, normally this has been also in very, very active use. To create a certain type of ceremony in our dramatical or kind of dramaturgy, how to move in the building, that is a really important part of the design. Uh, and uh, when to create uh, the concept of the whole project. So, architecture. Visuality, of course, is one big and important thing. Of course, we have also all the other. We have to smell it time to time. We have to listen uh, voice of architecture. But of course, visuality is important. But so that we people, we normally, we walk, we move, and uh, we have to consider we architects the movement, how the people are walking here, how they first uh, enter the building. They will meet uh, different components, uh, uh, kind of uh, hand shakes of or by the building. Then entering on the right hand side, there is the main lobby of uh, the, of the uh, whole complex. And finally to meet the auditorium, which is uh, hide it inside the rock. So it was a cave-like space and we only added some optional and some uh, components of course needed in auditoriums, seats, uh, some uh, uh, acoustic walls, uh, some structures, uh, ceiling structures for uh, techniques and so on. So otherwise uh, its nature and its architecture is a combination of wooden and stone surfaces. So also here, some opposites, but the warmth of wood is absolutely important part of the architecture. And also, uh, if to think uh, its identity, I think there are no I don't know, I have not seen, but maybe there are somewhere, uh, a concert hall or an auditorium with natural stone walls. It's, by the way, very practical one, very uh, functional one, because of its acoustic uh, uh, reasons, uh, acoustic conditions. So many records have been done in this auditorium because it's, uh, it's good acoustic. Also, I studied architecture when some old values were still existing in architecture, like proportions. And also, uh, what we have learned from the history of architecture, although in this case, uh, this whole composition uh, uh, is somehow random, there is a certain order, and it's chiplin. I am talking about, uh, uh, about the rhythm or system of structures, about some kind of uh, modulation, but also you can find there some signs of a golden section. That is something also which is uh, 
quite deep in my mind because uh, somehow, I don't know, there are maybe no real evidences that the golden section is a good one. But for me, it is. And every time when it is possible, I, I, I try to divide facets or also plans time to time according to, not exactly to the golden section, but just having some proposals. So lines, points, they have importance in architecture and in art still today, very much. And uh, then uh, uh, here is now uh, as a third example of wooden buildings, uh, Haltia, which is the Finnish nature center. Also here, um, the demand of uh, our client, it was a demand because uh, our client said uh, uh, very interesting uh, calls for this process to create a building which really could create the presence and uh, existence of the Finnish nature. How to do it? Because, because we had a commission to design the building, not the nature. That was very controversial, complex goal, of course, due. Uh, our client helped us a bit uh, giving us also the commission of uh, the core exhibitions so that uh, we could create the whole interior, the whole message of this, uh, this wooden building. Uh, here, according to the site plan, you can re recognize that also here, the building itself is not far away from, from the water, from the small lake. We are in... Uh, uh, the southern part of Finland now, and uh, our uh, southernmost uh, national park is next to this building. And this is uh, not an information center, but a kind of uh, 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 first view to have a look at what is important in, in Finnish nature. Uh, yeah, here also the shape of this building was uh, quite important. The plan itself uh, which is describing the major ideology of the whole building because uh, several ecological uh, requirements and, and goals were set by, by us, by our client. So, uh, for instance, the energy consumption should be as low as possible nowadays. The result was that we can talk about so-called zero, uh, uh, zero level uh, energy, uh, how to say. Uh, so it's earning more energy actually than what, what it consumes during, uh, during uh, more, uh, nine months in a year. And uh, that's why also the plan itself is uh, formulated as it is formulated so to the north there is totally closed curved wall and then to the south there is this is the north and this is the south side so that uh, uh, it's a kind of 24-7 uh, uh, working building taking into account the sunshine and cold winds from the north. Of course, there is uh, technically also a uh, very, very important part is uh, mm, the solar energy, soil energy, and so. So we uh, had a big purpose, a big goal, big task to put together the quality of a wooden architecture generally to create a spiritual site for the Finnish nature, where to present uh, highlights of Finland and Finnish nature, at the same time to uh, create a pilot project of very, very energy saving, saving building. Facades, they are wooden facades with uh, a special treatment, with uh, a heating process, for instance, copper, stone, again. And then, finally, the interior, where we were working within this uh, exhibition structure, which uh, was very, very central part of the exhibition. And it's, it's like uh, 
we nominated it. Its, it's nickname is, is it was an egg, very simple nickname, an egg, because it was like an egg, telling the story how this all was born, how our who has created our world, not not uh, not cat, but uh, but uh, a bird, you know. That is an old part of an old mythology and uh, can be found, for instance, in our uh, national epic Kalevala. However, that was another story. I mean, the manuscript of the exhibition here may be the more interested, interesting part is the structure itself, which was uh, uh, done according to uh, so-called uh, algorithmic design patterns which has been uh, very much in debate in Finland during the last 10 years and in our university, for instance, has specialized on that area. And a very good uh, uh, friend of mine, uh, Mark, uh, was... Uh, was uh, uh, mm, oh, I forget now. Maria, can you help? Markus, Markus Vikkar, who was uh, uh, working uh, uh, with me, creating... Uh, calculations and structures for this very, very special structure. So there are 700 individual staves with individual joints without any nails or screws. And it lowers one ton actually so that uh, we could have and see there on, on this uh, structure, let's say a car for instance. So that was only the test, but of course it is possible also utilizing a bigger scale buildings. Actually, in our Warsaw project, uh, we used the same techniques and the same computer programs. Today, maybe this is uh, already every, every, everybody maybe <laughs> can make uh, structures like this today, but let's say 10 years ago, it was not so, so, so easy. easy easy cake to do. Uh, so to develop first the program, to make all the calculations, then uh, to fabricate these staves, transportation onto the site, and then to put everything together, no waste, nothing. This is very, 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 very easy, very good example of a very ecological way to construct. And in my opinion, the direction where we architects should strive to, to move on also, to if really to talk about ecological architecture, which ecology or uh, sustainability is more or less today still, they are only worse, nothing else. But real evidences and proofs are existing very, very often. Okay, and spirit, spirit, spirituality, once again, comes from the fact that there is a balcon, there is a building, but the architecture is not the building, the architecture is the landscape and this beautiful skin. And that you can uh, observe this landscape from this balcon. You are in a peaceful space, in peaceful site, in safe somehow also, so our uh, biological instincts are very much also explaining our behavior. We know about that more and more today. And uh, in that sense, we architects, we are constructing uh, safe places, or we should do safe places. Okay, this was so wrong. Uh, I move on. I have to check the time now. Sorry. Mm, it's, uh, it's something like, okay, yeah, I'm in time still. Okay, good. Yes, from the countryside, from the forests, from the fields, cultivated fields to the city. This is Helsinki and this uh, red point describes, doesn't say nothing actually to you, but uh, there is our office. It's at the end of the street. This is when I am in Helsinki, and when I have time to go uh, to uh, uh, the office. Normally I have to manage projects in hotels or in the airports. Time to time also in my university when uh, all the students uh, leave me then after eight o'clock in the evening or something like that. But when I can walk to my office, this is my daily route. 
it's also a very, very inspirational environment in many ways. There are buildings designed by architects. There are buildings built without architects. There are structures which are buildings, but essential parts of the environment, some grains of an old harbor area, shipyard area, traffic, a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, restless environment, but good way restless. Robust, having layers. I would like to talk about uh, strat stratificational environment or architecture with different types of layers and ages, because age is something we have to recognize in our environment too. We all know how boring are the areas if we build once, at once, very big housing area, for instance. Going to be never interesting. And now, from our window, my, uh, I have a, a room with my partner. And from our window, on the right-hand side, there is a photo from our working room. On the left-hand side, there is uh, a maritime museum whose name is Vellamo. One hour right from uh, Helsinki to the east. And uh, completed 2008. The competition, international competition, was held uh, 2005. Actually, my partner Ilmari found the idea of that museum based partially on the view which was visible from our window. Only transporting this environment surrounding the idea or sketch of the building itself. On the left-hand side, there is the Kotka, which is the city of that museum. On the right-hand side, there is the Helsinki, a kind of test place for the museum or its concept. And that is also so interesting. I have said uh, often to my students that it's not needed to, it's good to travel. We, 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 we architects, we have to travel, of course, and to see different types of environments, uh, different cultures, its richness of this profession, absolutely, absolutely. But it's not needed to know all the styles of architecture or also we should experience more and more. We should understand our own environment where we are living because it is full of richness and drama. Our standard environment, if we can see. And very many of our projects, they have signs of the environment of our office. Now, okay, now here the museum itself uh, is close to invisible, but it is behind the grains and also here the grains on the right hand side again, the environment of our hobbies and on the left hand side, the real final completed building in Kotka, Maritime Museum. Although here, it was special, especially uh, managed by my, my, my partner Ilmari, and he was very interested in uh, uh, how to transform uh, the image of the glittering sea or water surface to the facade of that building. Actually, it's, it's very colorful, having mostly uh, a blue no tone, but having 11 different types and different colored aluminum panels, and this system is creating the effect of, of glittering. Also during nighttime, that works quite well. This was a real get-together site. The client, the city of Kotka and the Ministry of Culture, they wish was to, to create, they used this word, Guggenheim effect, adapted into the scale of Finland. I don't know if it succeeds or not, but that has been very, very popular, very, <laughs> very, uh, uh, very good working museum since its completion. But that is a big demand because the wow we, we know it's it's only it has so negative uh, 
a word somehow today that we have avoided to use it, but uh, frankly, I think everything we architects, we should be able to create a certain wow effect in interiors, exteriors, wherever, but somehow. But wow effect can be also very, very modest. It doesn't mean every time crazy shapes or crazy forms, but uh, some other we have uh, tools enough for architects. Quite funny thing is if you uh, visit Finland sometimes, our museum is in a, a dialogue with Alvaro Altos uh, Sunila area, which is located on the other side of this harbor area. And here there is one, one slide more about this illuminated facade. A good auditorium, but you have to light here. Should be a bit simmer. An interior once again, okay, like a cabin like interior in this case is an opposite to the exterior, which here is wooden exterior is metal system, but uh, but the interior wooden cabin like uh, even interior comes from uh, maybe a bit from the idea of uh, a ship's or we ship's uh, uh, cabin. Yeah, the museum. Yeah, now we are moving, moving, uh, moving from uh, mm, from Finland to uh, Poland to Warsaw. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, the process uh, you have seen at the beginning of my my speech. Uh, the siege uh, and defense museum, a memorial of Leningrad, the Holocaust Memorial in United Kingdom, and many, many others. Uh, these competitions and invitations uh, are good way constant. When this is what we have done in, in Warsaw and in Pol Poland. And this is also my, uh, a part of my professional history because uh, I have tried to learn about uh, Europe's history uh, after the First World War, actually, to know what has happened really here in Europe. Also, I don't know and I am not so well aware what has happened here in Czech, but I know quite well what has happened in Baltic countries, in Poland, and partially also generally in the northern part of Europe. The competition which was uh, arranged uh, to find the most potential uh, concept and sketch for the next steps of this uh, project. Competition was held uh, 2005. And uh, also in this case, as in, uh, in the cases I presented you at the beginning of my speech, there were uh, many, how to say, uh, stars of architecture. Uh, Daniel Liebeskind, uh, of course, was one of them. Uh, uh, and uh, I can't remember anymore all the names, but David Chipperfield and uh, yeah, many, many, many other, many other famous names. So it was a big honor to get, let's say, an invitation to a competition like this, because our studio was uh, totally unknown in that, that time. And uh, that is also which uh, encourage us, I mean, uh, smaller planets to participate in, uh, uh, in the competitions. Uh, behind of that competitions was also an evaluation process because uh, there were close to 200 applicants. Uh, to get an invitation, the final invitation to the competition, and we succeed to be uh, among the 11 shortlisted architects. Uh, and we succeed to win the competition too. Uh, 
However, if uh, to tell some issues about this very interesting process. First of all, I think uh, many of you know the history of Warsaw. And maybe uh, on the right hand side below, there is a photograph from 1945, which describes the area where our museum is located. Not far away from two, three hundred meters from the uh, Catholic church, which was the only uh, building or ruin which was visible on the site after the war. Uh, the old town which was uh, renovated uh, late 60s, beginning of 70s, uh, in, and in, is today on uh, the UNESCO World Heritage List, was uh, renovated according to the original drawings and photograph material criticized by the architects at that time too, because uh, that was a wrong way to manage renovation, to rebuild partially ruined buildings. Instead that, according to them, it shouldn't be built according to the style of that time. That meant some kind of uh, concrete block systems or element systems. We are very happy that we can see this old town market square today as it is renovated. It's a valuable example. Also how we can time to time rebuild and to make also a bit replicas. The area itself is very much memorial because it was the core of the uh, Holocaust and Warsaw Ghetto. Thousands and thousands of people were transported from here to the death camps. So in that sense, the site itself, to me, is rather a cemetery than a park. It's a park in an active use today, but it is a cemetery in that sense. And having also memorials, there was, when the competition was started, there was the memorial of the ghetto heroes, and there was the memorial of Willy Brandt, because Billy, Willy Brandt gave his famous speech on that area, beginning of 70s, saying openly what Nazis had done here on the site. Now, our strategy, our idea was that we can build here a building. Okay, this is a building because it has four corners, it has facades and so on and so But we should build more. And also making all the details, everything, in a way, uh, using non-architectural methods, no windows, no uh, components, standard components, which are part of a normal building. The competition rule and rules, regulations were quite tight also because, for instance, the height of this building was regulated, limited till 20 meters or something like that. I can't remember anymore. The footprint area too, because of uh, the fact that, that this, the area is a park, a green park, and uh, the building should have a small image somehow, uh, so that it would uh, adapt easier way to, to this uh, park-like interior. Uh, I think in Finnish architecture, in our country, uh, to us and to my generation, also to younger generation, I think uh, if we talk about the concept or if we talk about design, we can't understand the difference between concept and design. It's more or less the same thing, more or less the same thing, at least 
the design and the concept. These two phases must be in a, a dialogue, good way in a dialogue, so that we can test our idea. Also, that's a way that we check time to time details, how these two scales, two different scales, work with each other. And this left-hand side drawing is one of, I, I think we don't have not many, this is one of them, one of very, very few sketches which actually try to describe the concept, the idea of the building, which was uh, actually easy to describe because the idea was easy. We had only one box, rectangular box, which was in line with uh, the existing square with the monument of heroes. And we added the same square. It's a kind of double square we have now here in this uh, site plan, or according to this plan, we can consider it quite easily. With four corners, the building, the interior, which was based on curt forms, and the exterior, which was rectangular. So that was, uh, that was the power of uh, this submission in the competition. Also, what was said in the report of, uh, of the organizer was that uh, somehow this is describing also a good way values of Judaism, so modest exterior, but more rich interior. So that the exterior is based on rectangularity, and the interior uh, on free form space or uh, more different type of uh, a bit wow effect interior. And also here, that the building is in a dialogue with the existing components, with the statue which is maybe so valuable in terms of uh, its art, artistic value, but which has very much symbolic value for the history of Holocaust and for the people in Warsaw also today. So the monument, the statue, the square, and our museum, these three components are visible here. A bit like we uh, uh, presented in our museum project in St. Petersburg, where we also created three different types of components for the project. Now I run quite quickly. This is a kind of uh, slide show, showing now the final result, which was quite well in line also the concept of the competition. Uh, one problem was, and that happens time to time, especially I have seen in, in, in uh, uh, international competitions, uh, if I explain it uh, upside down, in Finland, we, where we, we have really well working and very uh, we have also very very long tradition in uh, uh, architectural competitions. That means that the winner normally is only only a scheme, only only a sketch for the next steps steps for for, for the project. And it happens quite often that uh, uh, an architect can uh, change also time to time also the idea, but at least the concrete design result after the competition. In this case, that was not possi possible because uh, the results of the competition achieved so uh, massive uh, media's interest that we, we received also phone calls and emails so that when this uh, uh, building was opened, because there were people in, in America everywhere uh, who, were, uh, who believed that all of these illustrations are, are, are photographs of a real building. 
And I think that we are, uh, we made, uh, uh, that was one reason we, uh, we really wish to keep the strategy to create a comp combination of materials of this glass and this stone material in the interior. And that was then the final result. I ran very, very quickly handmade sketches describing our aims and intentions, some mock-ups, and then the final surface of the facades here. We were also uh, thinking very carefully how to illuminate this building because in our very early sketches we uh, presented quite bright illumination. Afterwards, when I learned more about the history of the site, it became me. It was clear that we cannot illuminate this building like a commercial center because the site has to be more silent and to honor somehow the memory of these people, the people who were transported from here to the death camps and to the concentration camps. Actually, all of these people were transported to the death camps. That is a special, uh, special detail in this site. Time to time, although I said in the connection of uh, the Folk Art Center that I honor personally some rules of architecture, proportions, etc., so that uh, the facade has to have a certain special length and height and so, okay? And that how different uh, uh, textures they have also very great importance in architecture, like, for instance, in this case, what was the width of one glass copper panel? The facade was based on a certain type of zigzag system, so uh, every second panel was uh, copper, every second was, was glass, so it was uh, also, and it is changing every time when you are walking around the building. But although I really uh, let's say, honor uh, the history of architecture and its methods. In this special case, um, I was sure that this big opening, the big window, is something which has to have right to grow itself independent way as a result of what we have done in the interior in this uh, cave-like interior space. I had to promote and present the project in the US, for instance, just after the competition, and to explain to the people what has been the idea, what has been your uh, most intensive or essential idea, what is the message of this building this museum, you know, uh, the museum uh, in uh, Berlin, designed by Daniel Liebeskin, was completed mid of, uh, mid of 90s, approximately, and was loaded very much by different symbols, explanations, which, uh, uh, and which are, of course, important part of uh, buildings like this, because the people, they really will and wish to know what this or those describes. Okay, we also, we have ordered here some references, because our idea was not to repeat uh, some special events, what has happened on the site itself or in Warsaw during the war. Our aim was to extend the message of this architecture to cover more our human uh, values, 
universal values and uh, to bring some uh, different types of uh, sites from the globe and to transport this ideology to this building. We can find everywhere from the nature, we can find shapes or caves like the lobby or maybe time to time, for instance, this uh, smelting ice is uh, uh, it has a very, very, uh, very similar shape, happen to have it as in uh, in museum. Also, one part was again, now I am coming back to the beginning of my lecture because I am a Finnish architect. I am bringing my own memory, my own experience, on my own emotions and how to bring to this project, these emotions. Here is one answer. On the left hand side there is a photograph. Again, it happened to be from our island again. On the right hand side there is the first part of the exhibition. Uh, the name of the first gallery of this exhibition was Forest. And uh, that was the gallery where we were cooperating with uh, the exhibition designers. Otherwise, all the other spaces of the core exhibition were designed by uh, a British company, Event Communication. But here, somehow, nice way, we found a good solution and I was also myself very happy that the forest is again telling the story of uh, Jews, how they moved from the south to Poland, to Warsaw, and how they finally rested there on the site. Pauline describes resting, Pauline, Pauline word describes that uh, here is good to live, and so this is our home. And to them, forest, uh, to the first settlements, the forest was very important place to. And in somehow the process of this process was so long lasting, it took close to 10 years to keep the process in your hands. It was not very easy. It was not very easy, really. But we uh, had time to maturate, to advance our design in many, many ways also. And it was quite nice that, uh, to see how universal the shape of this lobby is, because everywhere and afterwards, I have found so many details from existing environments and built buildings, built maybe, I don't know when this left-hand side st step is, is built, but, uh, or was built, but uh, 1,000 years ago, because maybe, or something like that. Also, in our museum, I hope you can't read the time when that building was built. It's also value in architecture if we can hide somehow signs of our time and in that sense to try to create so-called timeless architecture and uh, how doors, how the standard uh, signs of our time buildings have been dis disappeared totally. Very quickly, I'm coming to the end of my, my speech. I love very much this photograph by uh, a Spanish photographer. He said that he had chosen these people here because they have either either, either blue or, or blue, or blue or, or, yeah, mostly blue. Blue bears is in very good in line with the environment. And of course, sun, sun sign and uh, uh, a kind of, uh, uh, kind of, uh, how to say, space which is living uh, with the help of, of light and sunshine. Totally different shadows, shapes, depending on the time of the day, depending on an annual or seasonal time. And so, here I don't go to the details, but you are interested in that now very, very briefly. The structure was based off this wall, the skirt wall on steel tubes. And then after that, the whole wall was uh, 
was uh, strengthened by, by concrete. Partially, some of these concrete are solid concrete, or, or let's say the structure is full of concrete. But normally, on the both side of this steel structure, there is uh, uh, from 7 centimeters till 15 centimeters thick layer of shot concrete. And that was also uh, very, uh, very uh, demanding uh, phase because uh, we had to uh, separate some uh, fire departments from each other. And also the wall itself is a part of the bearing supporting frame of the building. So in that sense, this is not, not a mask or which hangs from the structures. This is a part of the frame of this building. And that, that's why this was really demanding. And uh, in this special case, I remember uh, 2006, uh, we were in contact with uh, many, many uh, uh, foreign companies, Arab company, uh, Zahahadi's office, etc., Frank Gehry's office, to, to learn what is now, what is possible, how to manage uh, this kind of wall structure because uh, we had to manage together with our engineering team from Poland all the statical, uh, statical uh, calculations, our engineering team, but we were in charge to cooperate with them and to adapt different curves of this wall uh, to the calculations made by our engineering team. So in that sense, that was... Uh, that was quite special one wall, and in that sense, you can't actually. This is very individual. Find such a wall in the buildings which have walls like this, but very often they are only masks which actually hang from the frame of this building. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was the final result of uh, our software work, and uh, and then uh, yeah, there are the museum itself is very much a multifunctional modern building, providing also temporary exhibition areas, uh, areas for the education and so, and also here, like in the case we used in uh, Saint Petersburg competition in London. The main space, the core exhibition area, or learning center, or or the core, the core, the main uh, function of the building was located on the bottom, so that the history is there, and up up that uh, on on that then there are the future, and uh, all the the other facilities. Yeah, details are important. In Poland, it was still possible to uh, develop some uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, details based on handicraft work also, like this, or, 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 or this also, which was based on handicraft very much. Okay, then, then only four slides more because I will go into the details now in this connection. Now we are working just now in, uh, in Lithuania, in Serua, which is small, I would like to say a bit isolated village in the northern part of Lithuania, two, two hours drive from Vilnius to the north. And uh, also, this area will create very much a memorial site because uh, there is renovated two cemetery which was isolated before the Second World War. Uh, 1941, 600 people, citizens of the small city were killed during one night. And now this cemetery and 
the new museum memorial will honor the memory of these people, but also the memory of the lost culture, the lost village, lost town. That's why the name of this project is the Lost Städel in Seduva. Lost Städel. It was also a very interesting, very simple starting point to create a scheme for an idea for the whole process because, as you can, re re you can consider, there are some buildings with saddle roofs, a kind of complex of uh, which may describe also very concrete way the history of the lost settle Seduva, bringing again this uh, uh, this old village next to the cemetery area. All of these uh, facades, roofs, saddle roofs, we will use uh, printed, uh, profiled uh, metal. So our aim has been to uh, uh, to uh, to show only an abstraction, an abstract scheme of the village without any real signs of real buildings. So in that sense, this is creating an opposite to the traditional way to build buildings, but uh, only providing the scheme, the idea the existence of a building. And also here, you can maybe consider this. We have a final top every time in architecture. We have to, in memorial building sites, we have to have a one highlight, which is a symbol of the whole memorial. And here we have the canyon, whose name is the Hope Canyon of Hope from here. After you have circulated the whole exhibition, you will finally consider the emptiness, white emptiness. Our building and building's interiors gonna be totally white as well as this canyon. Light and whiteness, and you will see from here the cemetery, renovated to cemetery and the landscape and the city of Seduva. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I think that time is now over.